Let's learn about paleo art. Paleo means old and art means, well, art. So paleo art is any art that is attempts to portray prehistoric life. But let's be real here. It's mostly about dinosaurs. <laughs> Brief history of what is up with dinosaurs. So let's say that you jump out of your time machine 150 million years ago. You see this guy wandering around. It's Diplodocus. Hello, Diplodocus. Oh no, an ancient version of a coconut is falling. No, oh my gosh, no. Oh, the horror. Oh, oh boink. Well, he's dead. Poor guy. So then his body falls to the ground and happens to be a little muddy. So this dino's body sinks into the mud a little bit. And then what? Sudden storm. A storm happens and a mudslide comes in out of nowhere and just covers up the dino body. The platypus is completely covered. Slowly over time, the meat on there gets eaten by bacteria and decomposes. Then only the bones are left. Fossilization occurs. This can happen many different ways. Let's say that these bones undergo permineralization which means tiny amounts of minerals in the groundwater sink into the bones and slowly replace them, crystallizing. And so the bones become stone. Millions of years later, humans are around and a human wanders up and is like, hey, I need to dig a well or something. Boom, finds giant bones. So the early humans didn't know what was up with these giant bones. Some of them thought there were giants wandering around or dragons or all kinds of crazy stuff, which led them to believe that possibly the bones were magic. Some people even crushed the bones up and ate them like medicine, thinking they would give them some sort of magical abilities or health. Please do not do this. Eating rocks is a bad idea. Anyway, as humans got better at understanding uh, the world, uh, aka using science, they began to understand that dinosaurs were ancient creatures. And this is where paleo art comes in. All we have left are of these ancient, long-dead creatures are the bones and fossils. So how can you see what they looked like when they were alive? There's no way. Cameras weren't around. Uh, humans weren't around. There's no record. So scientists and artists have to work together to create and represent what the dinosaurs looked like. For example, Mary Anning and Sir Henry Thomas de la Beche. So Mary Anning was an awesome scientist, fossil collector, and seller. She was born on August 8th, 1793 in Lyme Regis in Dorset, England, uh, to a poor family where her dad was a cabinet maker. As a way to get extra money, Mary and her brother Joseph and her dad would go out to the beach, which they lived really, really close to, and they would collect fossils. There were all kinds of fossils on this beach. Every time the waves came in, they'd get washed free from the land. So they would find these fossils, and then they would go and sell them to collectors and tourists. And Mary kept collecting the fossils. It became her business. And she was studying the fossils. She found amazing full skeletons um, and discovered new kinds of dinosaurs that people didn't know about then. She even drew sketches of the bones, and she knew way more about fossils than most of the people that were buying the bones from her. Unfortunately, at the time, women were not allowed in the scientific societies. Rich men would buy the fossils and then pretend they had found the skeletons themselves. Henry de la Beche moved to Lyme when he was a teenager and became good friends with Mary, and they would often uh, hunt fossils together. Well, Henry went into the military, but he never forgot his love of fossils. When he was 21, he joined the Geological Society of London, which Mary was not allowed to join. And he drew a sketch in 1830 called Dura Anticor, a more ancient Dorset. It shows Mary's finds, uh, three types of ichthyosaurs, a plesiosaur and a dimorphodon. Henry had a lithograph print made, which was how you made copies back then of his watercolor painting. He sold the copies to help Mary with her financial troubles. More and more scientists and artists use the newest knowledge to draw their depictions of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. This kept going on and uh, people would build upon the ideas of the, the people before, like Mariani. Richard Owen studied bone structures and how animals' muscle, skin, fur, and scales looked when they went on top of bones. Um, Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins made life-size models of what dinosaurs might have looked like and he had them in the World's Fair on huge display which made lots of people really interested in the paleontology art. Charles R. Knight used his knowledge of 
always insisting on drawing living animals to draw lifelike and active versions of dinosaurs. So paleo art has never stopped. Scientists and artists are working hard every day using the newest dinosaur discoveries to make the best renditions of drawings and paintings of what dinosaurs looked like. Maybe you'll be the newest paleo artist and you'll draw the best example of a dinosaur out there. Okay, guys.